and welcome to Vantage Point's Financial Intelligence Series. Thank you for joining us as we unwrap this highly anticipated topic. We are a service and sales partner for SAP North America in financial planning, budgeting, consolidation, reporting, and analytics. Our thought leadership goal is to be the number one source in the industry for content and collaboration for all things enterprise performance management. We hope to bring clarity to an ever-evolving technology landscape by staying focused on the financial process that drives success for your organization. Enjoy the webinar. Today, what we're going to be covering are um, a variety of topics, but really focusing on two main items. So one is the, the BPC roadmap. Uh, we'll talk real briefly about that, where a BPC is and where it's going to, as well as migration, how to move uh, BPC to the latest version. So if I look at the EPM solutions that are available, uh, the solution today is BPC 10.1. Uh, both for Microsoft and for NetWeaver. The idea, of course, about uh, BPC is that it facilitates that closed-loop process of the strategizing plan, going to the analyze and optimize, as well as a close and disclose process. So both these versions are available today. They've both been available for uh, quite some time. Uh, the end of mainstream maintenance, of course, for the 10.1, you can see here, is 2020. So end of the year, 2020. So good lifespan, still going ahead. So if we just look real briefly at the EPM solutions, um, we have mentioned that uh, the focus really is the closed loop process, which is the financial process. So starting with the strategize, with a long-term strategy uh, going into the you know, uh, annual plan and then moving into the analyze where you uh, do the, re the reporting of the actuals come in against your plan, optimization using forecasting, going back to reporting again. So each of these blue segments, if you would, would be iterative cycles, ultimately ending in a close and a disclose if you are a public company. Of all the products that support those, you can see listed on the, on the slide, BPC handles all of these things. So if you are already, are already a uh, BPC customer, uh, you will find that uh, you're, on a, you're on the right uh, platform there for finance because it supports our closed process, no problem. Also, just notice, however, that we've got a new product coming in over here. It's called Cloud for Analytics for planning over here and Cloud for Analytics over here for reporting. And so we'll be talking a little bit more about that later on. So the EPM focus for SAP from a roadmap perspective is they really want to try and lead the market with ongoing investment in their EPM solutions. We've just looked at the solution set there, but really BPC being the crown jewel. And so they want to lead that still with ongoing investment while integrating it with their, uh, with their existing HANA platform. So ultimately, uh, we're going to end up with uh, two versions, if you would, of BPC. Currently, we got a, a Microsoft and a NetWeaver, but ultimately, I think we're going to end up with a Microsoft and an S4 HANA. Uh, but of course, NetWeaver will still be there. Uh, ultimately, though, the end goal will be to move everybody onto S4 HANA for finance. And they want to get there through innovation. And so what we're going to see as a go forward is a lot of um, cloud-based innovation as well as predictive-based innovation and then uh, um, enhanced delivery back to the end user. The ultimate vision is to connect finance with the, with the line of business. So finance uh, quite often has been seen as a, um, a, a, a required function in order to understand where the company has been. Uh, and really that information has been kept primarily within the company itself, uh, within finance itself, that is to say, I'm sorry. Really what the idea here is to connect finance with the organization, the line of business, so that finance can provide the insights and guidance as a value add partner to the organization not just as a reporting partner, kind of overseeing what's going on. And SAP want to do this by providing the consumer-grade uh, consumer user experience, uh, as well as offering cloud solutions embedded directly with transactions, uh, while still providing the high-performance real-time platform solution. So that's the vision of uh, SAP. 
So uh, if we look at the SAP solutions for planning, there really are three of them currently. Uh, one is this new one that I just mentioned, SAP Cloud for Planning or Cloud for Analytics, as it's now called. Uh, Cloud for Analytics also provides a planning functionality. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about that. The, the main areas we're going to focus are uh, the BPC uh, for NetWeaver as well as BPC for Microsoft Platform. So let's talk about planned innovations for BPC or Microsoft. So currently we spoke about 10.1 that is available today, has been for roughly six to eight months. Um, some of the main enhancements that are coming forward, planned innovations that are to be delivered still coming. Uh, one is consolidation monitor. This is the ability to have a focus specifically on the consolidation process and uh, will allow uh, finance to actually uh, 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 be very specific and, and um, uh, effective in the consolidation. That's one of those tasks that uh, is very iterative, you know, run the run the reports, look and see what's missing, post the journal, post the adjustment, rerun the reports and see what else you've got to do. So the consolidation monitor is going to be very useful for that. The other thing is they're coming through with a notion called the incremental consolidation. Interesting concept, also going to be coming through on NetWeaver. And the whole notion about this is that the incremental consolidation will allow you to partially consolidate and not have to reconsolidate pieces that have already been completed. So for example, if I've got a Canadian and a US entity, I can complete my US entity, for example, um, maybe I can close those books early, but once I've got them closed, I can now just focus on the Canadian entity. I don't have to keep relooking back at the US and BPC will know to only work on the, console on the uh, Canadian side, ultimately for me to get a full consolidation. Um, at the top of the house. So there's this incremental consolidation. We're expecting that to save time since we're not rerunning processes. Uh, they also have going to be uh, uh, opening up uh, BPC Microsoft to a product called, uh, a mobile application called EPM Unwired. And what that means is that if you want to deliver reports out of BPC onto your iPad or mobile app, then you can do that. And that's free actually, EPM and Wired is free. You can download, download that from the Apple Store. And then lastly, the one thing that's gonna be happening over here is uh, integration with this has, has already actually happened, integration with Cloud for Analytics. Um, one more note actually to mention is that currently BPC requires that you use Internet Explorer for Microsoft, but they will also be extending that to Chrome. And I think a part of that really is that's to allow for the cloud um, as a go forward growth. From a NetWeaver perspective, uh, real-time consolidation. What that means is um, the ability to link your BPC application directly to your GL uh, if you are running on um, HANA. Now, I will mention to you that uh, Vantage Point has got other partners we work with, and uh, some of the capabilities we're looking at exploring is providing something similar. It will not be real-time, but something similar where we can get near real-time extractions from uh, general ledgers and load it through to the Microsoft. However, that's just work in progress. Uh, that's a vantage point uh, um, um, endeavor. That's not a SAP. So back to SAP, real-time consolidation, linking back onto s uh, including additional multiple journal types. So um, you can do different kinds of multiple journals. Uh, one is going to include um, the, the new journal type, which is going to be the um, this full consolidation journal that, that handles all items um, across your ERP. There's going to be a convergence of the Office client, that is to say, Analysis for Office and EPM add-in uh, are getting closer and closer and closer. So if anybody uses Analysis for Office against BW and then the EPM add-in against BPC, those are coming together. Um, they uh, are currently two separate installs in Excel. That is to say, they get two different pull downs with their own ribbons, but uh, SAP is trying to kind of consolidate those to make them a single application. Also, better integration with business objects, uh, uh, integrating better with Design Studio and Lumera, ultimately, also Cloud for Analytics, and uh, also 
uh, a definite integration and uh, seamless data integration actually between uh, SAP disclosure management and BPC. So that's part of the whole end of the month close process. And if you've got your formal reports that you need to report out of each week, that disclosure management is the, is the tool to use. And lastly, as a roadmap overview, it would be the BPC optimized for S4HANA uh, for finance. It's actually what is called BPC optimized for S4HANA for finance. And uh, this currently exists. Um, it's still being kind of moved into the marketplace. People need to be on S4HANA first. So I think that's going to be the first step. And then BPC optimized for that later on. But this will also include real-time consolidation as well as the ability to work with immense amount of details. So things like cost allocation simulation will be part of the abilities and capabilities that you can do on the BPC Optimize for s hana So leveraging the power of HANA with the volumes that HANA stores, but using the user interface and uh, functional capabilities that, uh, that uh, is provided through uh, BPC from a financial perspective. So really what we're looking at is from a roadmap perspective, that red line de depicts where we're really at. On 10.1, where we're at is we take raw data, we get it cleaned up, we move it into BPC, we, we can get efficiencies, and we can become effective in our processes, make no mistake. But it's really backward looking. What I mean by backward is history. So uh, it, 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 it tells us currently up to where we are, even really maybe even to the minute. So from an actual standpoint, it can be pretty accurate. Uh, it is very accurate, but very timely. And um, with great capabilities for OLAP reporting and, and ad hoc reporting, as well as even getting that out to the cloud. However, typically, it's, it's historical looking data. So um, where we're going to be going to is moving more into the predictive as a go forward. And so what that means is that now we've got the volumes of data sitting within the BPC repository because it's all sitting in one central model. We can take some of these predictive analytics algorithms that SAP have developed specifically for HANA, but that can now be applied back to the same data store sitting in BPC. So we can look at some predictive going forward. Initially, it's probably going to be why did things happen, and then ultimately getting a lot more focused talking about what will make something happen. And then the, the, the utopia is the optimization uh, predictability, which is what is the best thing that could happen? In other words, what, can, what shall I do today that's going to make my life better tomorrow the best way possible? So those are exciting times. So that's kind of where we are from a roadmap perspective. And I did want to spend the vast majority of time really talking about where we are currently and then about the migration because I do think that's probably why the majority of people are on the phone today. So currently, if you look at SAP's current support strategy for BPC, uh, we've got a table over here. The table shows you the Microsoft versions at the bottom of BPC, so 7.0 going up to 10.1, and then starting again at 7.0 for NetWeaver going up to 10.1 of NetWeaver. Um, so these are the current versions, or these are the versions available currently from SAP on BPC. The items that are in red have already um, ended the end of mainstream maintenance. They ended it in March this year. So if you're on Microsoft 7 or 7.5 or NetWeaver 7.0, uh, you are currently running on an end of mainstream maintenance, and you're probably aware of that already. By the way, if you're running on Microsoft, you're probably running on Server 2003, uh, which also Microsoft has um, sunset from a maintenance standpoint. So um, really what you want to be getting onto is a 10.1, either on the Microsoft or 10.1 on NetWeaver, if at all possible, uh, because that is the latest, the latest version. I did mention, I did want to mention over here on the right-hand side the location. Uh, the only reason I want to mention is, as a differentiator is when you run on SQL, of course, it's against any SQL database. That's where your data resides. When you run on NetWeaver in what we call the classic model, we'll talk more about that in a moment, you run in your own namespace. If you run in an embedded model, you run native within NetWeaver in the EDW. So 
I do think that two main reasons that people uh, have joined us for the call today, you either realize that you need to move to 10.1 and you may be on 10.0 and you want to go to 10.1 and that's of course totally acceptable too. Uh, but for the folk who are on 7 or 7.5, uh, it's really become a matter of urgency. Or you're asking yourself, which platform should I be running? So as part of that migration of going from 7, 7.5 to 10, if I'm on Microsoft, should I stay on Microsoft? Or should I maybe move to NetWeaver? And ultimately, um, that question is going to end up down to your um, IT strategy as well as uh, the capabilities available you know, within the within your environment. So um, uh, uh, moving to 10.1 is where we, where, really where we do want to go. Another thing we've noticed that people have been asking us because uh, the migration has been taking over the last few years has become a fairly standard question is, can we host or can we look at a hosted solution so that I may be running on Microsoft 7.5 right now, I want to go to 10.1. I don't have the uh, infrastructure nor do I have the IT uh, support in order to make it happen. Uh, can we look at a hosted solution? And so I do want to mention that Vantage Point does offer hosted solutions for uh, both Microsoft and for NetWeaver as well as the, associate, the associated application managed services that goes along with uh, BPC. And so uh, we keep it running smooth and pristine as a hosted solution. If you do not want it on site any longer, um, that's becoming a large trend. So what were some of the major enhancements that came through between 7 and 10.1? Three main areas, usability, functionality, and performance. From a usability standpoint, uh, two huge differences that uh, uh, came through. One is the Excel interface uh, has changed. We no longer use EVDRE. We now use the EPM add-in for Excel. EPM add-in for Excel does still support most, by far most, of the EVDRE functions, but it has a, got a very different interface, which I'll show you later on in the presentation. But uh, for now, you can see it at the bottom of the screen over there. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a totally different uh, user experience now in Excel when you interact with BPT. The other large change, uh, specifically between Microsoft um, 7, 5, and 10, um, but even on the NetWeaver version, they've rewritten the admin console in HTML5 as the user interface. And they've tried to really make the admin console be a lot more user-friendly and group functionality to be a lot more intuitive. And so we'll look at that later on in the presentation as well, and you'll see it is by far an improvement. From a functionality perspective, um, there, apart from the other functions that have been improved, functionality from a reporting perspective and from the admin, they've also introduced this consolidation central. Consolidation Central is um, a, a capability that now resides uh, within BPC where you can specifically monitor and manage your consolidation process as a consolidation process. Uh, this is over and above what uh, people have come to know uh, for things like um, status management, etc., within, uh, or work status, excuse me, within BPC that helps with your budgeting process. And then performance. Um, is another thing that's happened. So uh, as NetWeaver has uh, progressed and now uh, NetWeaver as BW may itself it's run on top of HANA, so there's some natural enhancements that come through there, but uh, they've also uh, allowed on NetWeaver to choose different type of model types. So there's the classic, which is the standard way that we've always done it, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the, with the classic model. Uh, a, st a structure type. So uh, uh, please don't think because there are other options out there that that, that, that classic is wrong. Uh, classic is totally acceptable and a good model structure to go with. Embedded is uh, a different storage option. It stores as, uh, stores data more kind of HANA friendly, if you would, uh, using key figures, which is more BW like. And then there's the S HANA where data is not actually stored within BPC per se, but it's actually stored just on on the HANA database. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But the main focus really here is 
one of the main enhancements is the user interface for both the end user and the administrator has changed significantly. And then there's some of these enhancements that have come through. So what are some of the items to consider when you migrate? Um, and I'm going to run through each of these, uh, a slide on each of these. So we're going to talk about the platform. We're going to talk about should I get a brand new server or just upgrade what I got? Um, what can I look at standardizing? Uh, look at my data volumes and data, and data sources, reports and templates, my change management. And of course, let's not forget the original vision of why BPC was put in place in the first place. So let's look at the, at the platform. Microsoft is still an absolutely viable platform. It is being developed. It is part of the strategic plan. It is uh, uh, definitely part of the acceptable uh, way to go forward. In fact, I was presenting with SAP at a conference at the end of last year, met with the BPC Advisory Council, and uh, SAP assured me that this is an, a good way for them to keep growing the business with, with non-SAP customers. So for anybody who is concerned about staying on Microsoft, please uh, do not be concerned about Microsoft. It is definitely a viable option. It offers still great performance, and it is being enhanced. Uh, the 10.1 released about six, eight months ago, but we're expecting you know, additional enhancements later on this year, as well as into next year, so on Microsoft platform. Um, so please don't feel that Microsoft is not viable. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is that it's been extended to um, uh, interact uh, more with Bob J with business objects on for the mobility deployment, uh, so people can still use Microsoft as a mobile solution uh, and not just NetWeaver, which, which has been here for a little while. <coughs> From a BBC NetWeaver platform, um, I've got two diagrams over here. People typically either have the SAP ERP sitting out there uh, using SAP BW on the side, and the BPC is a part of BW. That is to say, it resides in the BW space. And some people like to have it residing in just the same BW space. Others like to have a second, separate BW namespace. Currently on NetWeaver 10.1, uh, when you uh, run the classic model, it, it does work in its own what we call namespace. And there are all kinds of reasons for that, but that is just how it is. And so um, here you can see it's running its own namespace and over here as well. Here it's got its own separate environment. Um, uh, for reasons that would allow uh, uh, clients to upgrade their BW version to run the latest version of BPC while not having to run the whole organization on the latest version. So currently NetWeaver 7.5 is available. Um, 7.4 is the most current, but certainly 7.5 is available. Is available. Um, most people aren't on 7.5 as a, a standard BW, but if they had this instance, they could easily move to BW 7.5 because the only thing that would be affected would be BPC. So um, SAP NetWeaver does come with standard extractors to provide native integration for both master data and data. And this is a, um, it's been a great perk uh, for those who moved on to NetWeaver. Um, uh, I just would, we do want to mention though that even if you're running on Microsoft, and we do have clients who run SAP ERP and who run um, BPC on Microsoft, uh, totally acceptable and there are great use cases for this. You can still use those standard extractors. If you run SAP ERP, you can still use those standard extractors for both in the NetWeaver and for the Microsoft platform on BPC. The NetWeaver platform, however, is the only platform that provides the standard and the embedded model types, which we had mentioned earlier on. Uh, it's really just how it stores the data. You do not have to choose one or the other. You get both. And so you can have one model, for example, running a standard model, uh, a storage type, and another model on the same instance running um, using the embedded way of storing data. If you run BPC on HANA, so sometimes what we find is people are still running the ERP, which is native ERP, but they've put this BW portion onto HANA, because BPC is part of 
PW, you automatically get that in-memory uh, benefit, as well as you do get um, some of the Hunter Calculation Engine benefits. So um, there are components that you can move back from VPC um, where you can actually do calculations, both whether it be MDX or dimension logic, and script logic back on the HANA calculation engine. So some other enhancements that come that, that way. Um, there's certainly, certainly integration taking place going forward because NetWeaver 7.4, you were required to install certain BPC components. In NetWeaver 7.5, uh, it automatically comes installed with those BPC components. And as a result, there's a readiness for BPC Optimize for S4HANA because those components have been integrated into NetWeaver already. Now, that being said, um, if you are not ready on S4HANA yet, it doesn't mean that you still can't build your BPC applications ready for S4HANA. Um, we can talk more about that um, on a different webinar, but certainly there are cases that people know they want to go to S4HANA, but they need BPC now. Uh, we can build BPC optimized ready for the HANA, the S4HANA deployment that we can change the data store from being a BW data store to actually S4HANA back in the geo. So should I start using a clean slate or should I just update my service? This is appropriate for both Microsoft and for NetWeaver. I think you will find that folks who are running on Microsoft probably um, are gonna retire those servers and probably gonna end up with a clean slate, a clean slate. Um, and those on NetWeaver, um, this may be more of a question. <coughs> so the first one you can do is, the option one is to do the upgrade in place. That is to say, you do a direct migration directly on your existing system. Um, the pro, of course, about this is pretty straightforward. You simply, um, on Microsoft, you simply uninstall 7.5, you reinstall you know, 10.1, and you are, quote unquote, done. It's just really simplistically because uh, that's not exactly true, because uh, we would certainly recommend you upgrade your version of SQL Server, as well as your environment, as well as look at streamlining some processes. But from a technical upgrade perspective, it's really pretty straightforward. It's almost as straightforward um, as on BW as what it is on Microsoft. So doing a, a direct migration on your, system, on your existing system, from a technical perspective, uh, is not difficult. The con, of course, is that if when you do that to your production environment, that you uh, disrupt your users. If it takes a while to get your production up and running, uh, then um, your users can't use your application up for that time. The second option is that you make a copy. What that means is, is that you take a copy of your, of your production environment and you copy it over to your new environment. The new environment may be your QA that you want to upgrade but you want to have the latest copy of your data and reports, et cetera. Um, or it may be a brand new environment. So let's just assume it's, it's an existing environment that you've copied your prod over onto. Also pretty straightforward. Production's not affected, of course, because you're doing it on your QA first. Um, also pretty much a technical upgrade um, and uh, uh, low risk. What that does mean, though, is that if you had any issues sitting in production, you're going to replicate them on the QA environment. So you may have got some bad script logic, you may have got some bad data, you may have uh, got some uh, security that needed to be repaired or up, you know, updated. Um, you've just kind of migrated it back over as part of your upgrade process. The third and the, the most thorough, if you would, is the clean state, which is a fresh installation on a brand new server. Not everyone has the, uh, the budget to do this, but of course, it's a, it's a fresh install on a brand new server. Um, on a Microsoft environment, it's, it's, it's really a, a pretty simple process because all you've got to do is have your Microsoft environment. You probably would be installing SQL 2014 and, um, and install BPC 10.1. And then what you could do is you could either do a, a BPC backup restore and then make sure everything works, or you can move over object for object. On NetWeaver, what you would do is you would create a 7.4, um, Service Pack 14 is our recommendation, or 7.5 Service Pack 2 of NetWeaver, and uh, then install BPC, the same deal. You can run your UJBR, which is your backup, and then your restore uh, command in BPC. That's um, so uh, on NetWeaver. 
Most controlled, definitely the cleanest way to go. Um, it makes you stop and look at each object. So most thorough. And um, if, if I have a preference, that's what I like to do because I know we're starting in a brand new, fresh, latest and greatest uh, environment. And so that that's my preference. The pro, of course, that it's very, very thorough. The con is it requires a full installation. You have to get a whole new server. It can take a longer time to get you know, NetWeaver, et cetera, installed. But um, nevertheless, in the, in the scheme, in the grand scheme of things, that's um, probably a nice clean way to go. So standardization and cleanup. What does this mean? It means when you do this, this is a good time to stop and look and say, I've got some standard data route, some, I look at my data load routines and make sure that they're as efficient as possible. I may have got um, a new environment, for example, if I'm on SQL 2000, I've got um, SQL 2014. There are enhancements there I could inherently take care of. There are enhancements that come in 10.1 that of um, uh, BPC and their enhancements that come through in uh, NetWeaver that I could be taking advantage of. So just because it works doesn't mean it's standardized or it's optimized. So standardize where you can, whether it be data load routines, whether it's some of your calculations, that's both calc scripts, as well as um, uh, your dimension logic. Um, there's some additional you know, performance enhancements that come through that maybe you can simplify some script logic and move it into your dimension logic or vice versa. Um, and the biggest one here are templates and reports. So templates and reports uh, typically over time become um, uh, stale and new ones get built and the old ones just get left there. This is a great time for cleanup. And so this is a good time to look through and validate and say, hey, um, uh, do we need to keep everything that's still sitting out there in our BPC libraries that's stored back on our server? The other thing that's good is that uh, people have learned to use the multidimensionality and BPC over time. And so now instead of maybe having a report for each division, I can now consolidate or standardize into one PNL that I now run for each division, that same report. So um, from a reporting and template standpoint, uh, standardizing where you can, learning what you have over time with BPC, and then leveraging BPC as best you can, Again, standardization is a great way to go over here. Um, then with those clean up, clean up items, uh, one is I mentioned there about unused reports, folders, data manager packages, etc. Great time to stop and say, do we really need them? Naming conventions, you may have always said, I always get around to doing these things, like modifying the folder name, modifying the report name. Do it as part of your migration. Um, so factor it in. And so you, when you get there, it's a pristine, good user experience when you do the rollout going forward. So great for user acceptance. And then also we look at data automation. Sometimes um, there are items that were done to get around a problem that were never got back and cleaned up. And um, now you can do that, whether it be technology advances or just knowing more about how things work. So. Good time to standardize, and it's a good time to do the cleanup. Uh, definitely recommend both. Data volumes. This is another thing that people are quite often get around to looking at. So you may have been using BPC for seven, eight years, and you've got, you maybe started with three years worth of history, and now you end up, you know, you've got 10 years worth of, 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 of actuals sitting out there, and you ever probably only used three or four. So instead of keeping all the history there, as part of the migration, it's probably a good idea to archive some of it off, separate model, still available, just not always encumbering the calculations and reporting performance. Um, so do you need to keep all the history you need? You know, um, keep what you need. Don't necessarily keep what you have, but archive what you have so it's always available going forward. Also a good time to stop and say, do I need new, met uh, new metrics? So there may have been some KPIs. Um, that were being used to manage the business eight years ago, five years ago, they're no longer appropriate, get rid of them. Start doing some cleanup, get rid of the accounts, uh, and just make sure that things are pristine and clean again. Um, don't forget, though, the time it's going to take to validate the data, whether you're moving from 
just you know, 7.5 to 10.1 on the same platform, Microsoft or NetWeaver, don't forget the time it's going to take to validate. Uh, and this is also a good time to look back at your configuration of where you store your logs, your temp files, your database files, and are you using um, the data storage as optimal as possible. What I mean by that is that are you uh, keeping log files on a separate server from your temp files from a separate data server from your database so that you can, you can optimize performance. This is a great time to reconfigure those. And looking at history of what you currently have um, to where you want to go to, this is a good time to strategize and think about is that the right way or is that the way I want to go forward. Data sources also are another big area that could be looked at. So ECC to BPC. Um, what that means is um, we've got the standard extractors I mentioned about over there. Data Manager has enhanced significantly between uh, 7.5 and 10, and, and even 10 and 10.1 for that matter. So whether you're on NetWeaver or Microsoft, you can still use those ECC extracted if you're running the SAP ECC GL, um, uh, and leverage Data Manager as much as you can because it's, it's, it's owned by finance. That means it's configurable and maintainable for going forward by finance, the people who own the application. If you're moving from Microsoft to NetWeaver, um, please do not underestimate the time to do the data reconciliation. Typically what we find is uh, people may have been sitting on Microsoft, they've decided to move to uh, NetWeaver for whatever reason may be, it may be just part of the now the IT strategy. <coughs> Maybe NetWeaver wasn't at the time, uh, wasn't available at the time when people implemented BPC, although they were an SAP shop. So um, if you are going to take your history, typically what we find it moves from BPC, in, uh, from the old version of BPC to the new version of BPC, partly because that's where the reconciliation and reporting has taken place, and you want to keep that consistent. Um, however, if you are going from Microsoft to NetWeaver, uh, just make sure that you allocate enough time in your project for that data reconciliation, uh, partly because you're going to have to rewrite the rules. And when you rewrite the rules, you want to make sure that you're getting the right answer. Reports and templates. So uh, really, from an end user perspective, this is the biggest difference that they're going to experience um, as, a, as a consumer of the BBC data. So. Although EVDRE um, is no longer able to be built, so you, you can't type in Excel anymore equals EVDRE like you used to be able to, um, you can still use your old EVDRE reports. <coughs> so um, you'll notice over here um, that uh, we've gone to the function key, we've gone to our functions, and we've chosen the EV functions. Uh, you can see they, here they are over here. Here's another one called EPM functions. And here, if we look at the EVR fun at the EV at the EV functions, the Everest functions, you can see we still have a tremendous amount of the EVDRE uh, function codes. So your reports will, for the most part, work as part of the upgrade. Um, the parts that are not going to work are if you got macros, if you use the insert member function, um, and there are certain. Um, very select, typically not used um, EV DRE uh, uh, functions that are not there. But uh, the EV menus is no longer there. And so anything that you got with, um, anything you use VBA for or macros uh, will have to be rewritten using the EPM function. And there is a direct one-for-one -one MNU function for the, EV, for the EPM function. So don't worry about that either. EVDRE overall performs very well, by the way, in EPM. But you will have to test every report um, and every input template um, so that uh, as you go forward that you know they're going to work. And uh, for the most part, like I said, you may not even find that you have to do much work with them since EVDRE is still, in a sense, supported or the functions are still supported. Uh, and by the way, if you do need to build another EVDRE, just take an existing EVDRE report, copy it, Right, and change it to what you need it to be, and you're fine. <coughs> Excuse me. So the other part that um, uh, so that's normally the biggest issue that people worry about is is what will my reports work? And the answer typically is yes. Um, uh, about eighty percent of them should work without much of a problem. 
So change management is, the, is, is one of the other areas that uh, should really be taken in, into consideration and planned for. Uh, user interface does change. We just spoke about the EPM add-in, uh, as well as the admin console. So both from an admin standpoint and a user standpoint, the interface has changed. The interface is better in both instances as far as I'm concerned because the EPM report writer is now drag and drop. I do want to show you that at the end of the presentation. And the, the admin client is, uh, things are grouped so much easier that it's, it's, uh, it's actually a pleasure to work with. So uh, the other thing that has changed, of course, from a user experience, and this will have to be part of the rollout, is the logon changes. Uh, there is now this logon over here, which goes to an EPM connector, a little bit different than what we had in DRE. And then our report ribbon, of course, has changed as well. You can see here, this is EPM and data manager and um, the members within that change. If you do open up an EVDRE, the members over here will reflect EVDRE options. So uh, EPM add-in is clever enough to understand if you're in a DRE or if you're in an EPM add-in report. And don't forget the vision. We're here to do the closed loop process, ultimately to provide process efficiencies and business effectiveness. That's to help us know, secure, and grow our business. And so um, don't forget about the whole great vision of aligning the strategy with the financial process to bring confidence and timeliness of our financial numbers and to take our data, to distill our data, still into insights so we can provide value add back to the business about where we are and who we are and how, better, and how we can do better. So if you have not yet completed the closed loop process as part of the upgrade, it would be a good idea to stop and say, well, where are we? Is that, was that the goal? And if it's not the goal, should it be the goal? Because the integration with both business intelligence uh, into the EPM, as well as delivery via the cloud, um, is changing the way that uh, uh, PPC is actually used, not just for finance, but it's now really used for the enterprise. Structure the team as a project team. So treat this as a project. It really is a project. Uh, it's not a week or two project. It is, it is a project that's going to take time, as any upgrade does. So treat the project as a project, uh, which means allocate the time to it for internal resources. We would recommend, of course, you use an implementation partner because we've got experience, we've got expertise, and it allows you to do this right the first time around. You don't want to do the upgrade and then uh, the users realize they've got all kinds of problems. One, they've got a new interface. And two, you didn't know how to use a new interface better to help um, uh, uh, their, them do their business better. And so do it right the first time. Take advantage of um, our expertise and experience, and as well as help us uh, show you the advantages of the enhancements and how those can be used within the business. So treat it as a project. Allocate the appropriate time internally. And then use the partner that you choose, um, use their project manager, because it's not an upgrade as a traditional upgrade. Um, there's the user interfaces that change, which means there's the change management that has to take place. And the partner manager, the partner's project manager can help with that, with that process. Um, uh, leverage your own internal subject matter experts and leverage your partner as a subject manager expert. Uh, and create team roles, create your, create your roles within um, your own companies um, as you normally would with a regular project. So uh, find an executive sponsor, get your own project manager, find your business leads who are going to probably the BPC administrators, and then one or two folk from the field who are strong in report building, and then your technical lead, of course, because this is going to be primarily a technical upgrade from a back-end perspective and then a reporting and a process upgrade potentially from a, um, from a finance perspective. So certainly use your partner as a uh, leaning ground and uh, way, one way to kind of leapfrog the changes that come through. The other thing that is very exciting is that the ability now to interact, to interact BPC with uh, the cloud. So extending BPC beyond just a standard Excel or even business objects, but now into the cloud. What we're looking at over here is a screenshot of uh, Cloudflare Analytics. 
and um, as, as an end user, this is what they would see on their dashboard. Um, as an administrator, how would I do this? I would go into building a model, and I'd simply choose over here <coughs> to say, um, I want to import data from BPC. And I can import data, and I can import master data. This is both for Microsoft and for NetWeaver. And I can import as well as here's my door going in and here's my door going out. I can also export master data and data back to my BPC model. So pretty exciting. So what I thought I would do is show you the um, the, 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 the screen really quickly of the new administration uh, a, a console. So when I log on, I log on. Um, through a browser, and I get to see my library. So these are a list of my, of my web reports, uh, which are using HTML5 to build, as well as any of the activities that have been assigned to me. Here's my consolidation um, central, and here's my administration tool. So I'm just going to click on that, and you can see how things have been reorganized, so easy to find. So here I want to start with my dimensions and models. If I go to my dimensions, and I choose that, You'll notice how, oh, let me just, oh, it's asking me for my username and password. It must have timed out. Let me just log on again. Excuse me. Remember my credentials and say, okay. <coughs> well, that's good. There's a security check right there. So um, this is a listing of all my dimensions. And you can see I've still got my account types, just like what I've done in 7.5. Uh, there are some additional account types that come through in 10 that uh, uh, that you would need to know about if you want to do intercompany elimination or uh, currency reporting. Uh, but if I go and open up a dimension like entity, for example, and I choose that, I get to see the spreadsheet or listing look that I um, have seen in the past. This used to be in Excel or Microsoft. This is typically how it used to look in 7.5. I get to see my attributes running on top over here, or my properties, if you would, and I get to see my members running down. Um, but one of the other differences here, I can now choose to look at this in a, in a hierarchical view. And what that means is it takes a table view and allows me to look at my structures that I can even now drag and drop should I want to do that. Uh, so it's a lot easier than uh, looking at that, um, at that list view like we used to before. So let me close that down. And you'll notice how the screen slides to the side. And the reason for that is that if I was doing this on my tablet, uh, it would also work. The other thing I want to show you was Excel. So here's my new Excel. You can see I'm sitting here in EPM. I've got Data Manager and EPM. I've got a new button over here, my EPM ribbon. This is to log on, log off. And I've got my context pane, which used to be called my, my context, so that's quite similar. Now I'm an EPM context pane, and I've got an EPM pane over here. So if you were on um, uh, earlier versions, this is a new, a, a new concept in Excel uh, to have my EPM pane. So a couple of things to sh just to show you in my new report writer. I, it can actually be uh, sensitive enough to be aware that what I type in uh, it can recognize what I type in, excuse me, to, to build my model. So you can see I typed in net sales. I don't know if you notice it just flashed. If I type over here 2014 Q1, it flashes green because it recognizes uh, that I've typed in a member that exists on my model. And now because I've typed a column and a row, you'll see it's doing a retrieve and it's going now to try and intuitively go and pull data back into Excel for me. So this is quite similar to other products. And this is now a live, um, a live report. I can double click on net sales and it expands. I can double click on my Q1 and it expands. And um, um, so this is, this is just building the report um, directly in Excel. I double clicked, right? I, I just typed in the member name over there. So I can actually type over here um, actual and I can type over here budget. And it will go and bring, my, bring back my budget numbers for me. So a nice way to build a report. Um, another way to build a report is over here on my action pane. And so I can, you can see I've got a page axis. 
I've got a row axis and a column axis. So if I take time, for example, these are my dimensions, and I drag it down to column, and I take my account, and I drag it down to my row, it's also brought back for me. Now I've got a column and a row, I've got net sales, drillable, I've got my Q1, which is drillable. And so that all works very, very well. Um, and if I now want to you know, continue to modify and manipulate the report, which of course I do because I like actuals and budgets because I'm from finance, I'm going to take version and drop that below time over here. And it's currently showing me budget because it's linked uh, directly back over here to my context pane. However, if I double click on version, it lets me choose which members I want to see. So for example, I want to see over here actuals and budgets. I move them over to the right hand side. I say done, and it now builds my report here for me. The other thing that's really nice about this, it'll still understand um, what I want to do. If I want to build a, if I want to build a formula, uh, let's just call it variance, and I want to call it um, so it's actual minus budget, I can simply time that formula into BPC, and here it is. Uh, it does it for me. If I expand on its sales, it happens to expand my formula down. If I happen to expand on Q1, and it brings out my January, my February, my March, it's also brought out my variance here for me. So all very clever and uh, works very well. So let me close this down and close this down and uh, just go back to the final wrap up over here to say um, thank you very much uh, for your time. I see it's already five to four and Gary, I want to just hand it back to you and see if there are any questions that may have come up. Yeah, and I um, want to open it up for uh, those that have joined us. Thanks, Greg, for um, great information, bringing clarity to some complexities that exist out there. So uh, well job, job well done. And for those that have participated, if there are questions, we want to open it up. Um, you can raise your hand up in the upper right hand corner. Um, there should be a participation panel where you can raise your hand and we can open that up for you to speak any of your questions or you can go ahead and click on the Q&A and actually ask any questions that you may have. Um, and while those are doing one of those two action items on the list, I'll also tell you that um, you'll be receiving an email from us that will come at the end of this and it will kind of not only thank you for your participation but let you know about the upcoming webinars that uh, you might be of interest as well in this series of uh, what we're titling financial intelligence. And uh, the last note for me would be to tell you that if you happen to be attending Sapphire, we would be extremely happy to meet with you, spend some time covering any topics that you have on EPM where we could um, bring additional clarity or support you in any way that we can. So we'd love to meet you there, see you um, at the event, and we will be presenting on um, the topic of cloud for analytics and um, BPC at the, at the event at Sapphire on Tuesday. So I hope to see you there. And as I'm going through this, I haven't seen anybody at this point raise their hand or ask any questions. So uh, with that, we will close the session and uh, tell everybody thank you. And we look forward to the next one in the series, which is actually next Wednesday at the same time, 3 o'clock. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Bye-bye.